Hello everyone, so welcome back to my channel. This is the Metatron speaking and this is the Patreon documentary from November that I'm very happy now to release for everyone to watch. Also, I'd like to let you know that I, today I uh, streamed on Twitch for one hour playing Bloodborne. If you want to watch it, there is the video there. Make sure to click the link in the description below, become a follower on Twitch and I will be streaming again tomorrow. On to the video now. We'll talk a bit more later. Portate! Scuta, tollite! Scuta, tollite! Gawi, ottimo, maximo! Mowe! So here we are for the fourth Patreon documentary. I'd like to take a moment now to thank all of you patrons, because you are making these projects possible. Thank you for your constant and generous support. The Roman army was considered the most advanced of its time. We can say that, in a way, it was the Roman army that created the Roman Empire. And not only Rome itself, but a big part of Western Europe actually benefited from the riches that the Roman army would bring back from conquered territories. Ancient Rome, at its height, stretched from the British Isles to the Near East, dominating through conquest and assimilation. Much of this power was due to its formidable military, the legions, the legionis. But here is the leading question of this video. What made the Roman legionaries so effective in battle? Well, we have all heard that the Roman army was a powerful force due to their strong discipline and extensive organization skills especially against less organized enemies. That is a fact, but it's not all there is to it. There are a lot of separate reasons, uh, factors, that play an important role in the reason why the Roman legions were so effective in battle. One thing is for sure, there isn't one single answer that we can use, such as the equipment, or the tactics, or the generals, or the money. All of these things, and others, will play an important role, and once you put them all together, you will then understand why the Roman legions were so effective in battle. As a matter of fact, I truly believe that all of these points gain their strength once you connect them. More on that later.
Constant training was definitely an important characteristic of the Roman legions. Soldiers in the Roman army were constantly subject to a ferocious and rigorous regime, which turned them into an army of professionals. Not only that increased their individual strength, speed, precision and effectiveness as single combatants, but they also constantly drilled formation combat. They utilized muscle memory training, they became war machines, able to perfectly understand and execute their officers' commands in the midst of battle. So we understand that the Romans trained constantly and that training played a very important role in the effectiveness of the legions, but how did they train? Well, here's how this situation can become interesting. We do have some information when we read Roman writers, and of course one of the most famous ones is uh, Vegetius, Publius Cornelius Vegetius. Um, but of course we have to be careful because he's not referring to his own times, he's referring to times long gone and possibly towards the end of Republican times. So what we read and what we learn from Vegetius needs to be taken with a pinch of salt. For example, the fact that he mentions the idea of Roman soldiers training with wooden counterparts to their weapons and, and shields, so, so basically the, the gladius and the scutum, um, we don't know how widespread that, that practice would be and we are not really sure uh, as whether it really did make the legionaries faster uh, and stronger at using normal weapons. It might have in fact a little bit of a placebo effect. The question could be then, then why did they do it if it didn't work? Well, it surely didn't have access to the sort of scientific understanding we have access to now. In fact, if you're interested into this topic, you might want to, I'd like to refer you to Matt Easton's uh, from Scholar Gladiatorius channel. He made a, a video on this and I think he made some really, really good points and he does link some interesting articles in the, in the description that actually favor the idea of training with either weapons of the same weight as the ones that you would actually use in combat or even lighter weapons. This, of course, doesn't mean that the Romans didn't do it. It is possible that they still did. Um, but on the other hand, we don't know how widespread of a practice that was. We shouldn't imagine all Roman legions in the entirety of the history of Rome um, using this specific technique of training. But another question that we might want to ask is, how did they actually train? What did they do? How did they drill? Some of the information, again, is interesting. We have it. But on the other hand, I believe that experiment, experiential archaeology, experimental archaeology, are very important. So what reenactment group can do is extremely important to support academic studies. Now, I myself have decided to devolve a little bit of Patreon funds to recreate a Roman contubernium. A contubernium meaning eight soldiers led by a Deganus. And we are almost getting there. In fact, some of the clips that you have seen at the beginning of this video, the intro of this video, they were not there just to be climatic, but they were there also to show you what we are doing. We're trying to recreate Roman commands, commands and shouts in Latin. We have been studying statuary evidence to try and understand the combat stance, and then we have, we have been practicing the usage of Gladius and Scutum constantly. And that is something towards, it's a project that I'm working on, could be considered a continuation of this documentary, which will help us understand, with time hopefully, and of course your help, how the Romans fought. I'd like to also take a moment to mention the Legio XIV Gemina. It's a Northern American historical reenactment group of which I am part of. If you uh, are in America, for example, and you'd like to join them, that you can do, and I will leave a link in the description to their page. I am officially a member of the Legio. They are a fantastic group. They do everything re in a very historically accurate way, and I might participate to one of their events in America soon. Now, in the part about training, you must have noticed that my friend Luca and I, uh, we were both training for thrusts with the gladius, but also for slashes. And I'm sure that some people will immediately bring up the point, as it often happens in the comments below of my uh, YouTube channel, bringing up the concept of, well, when the Romans only uh, taught to thrust, why are you practicing slashing? And the evidence that they bring against this is the idea of, if you are in tight formation and you're trying to slash, you might hit the guy next to you. Well, first off, as far as we understand, yes, there were some situations when Roman formation was really shoulder to shoulder, such as, for example, Testudo, but we all also know that there were more open uh, formations, in fact a lot of reenactment groups, they actually prefer using this sort of formation, having basically the space of a man between two soldiers, in which case you could actually move your arm for an actual slash. It's true also that Wagetius does mention thrusting as the most effective and quickest way to kill an opponent, particularly when you thrust 
them and stuff them in their stomach. But that again doesn't mean that they did not slash. And my personal interpretation to this is that yes, Roman legionaries preferred thrusting, but they would also slash if the occasion presented itself. In fact, when we read the accounts of the Dacian Wars, we read about uh, opponents of the Roman army being dismembered. And I'm sorry, but you can't dismember an opponent thrusting. You have to slash, you have to chop in order to cut limbs. When we talk about the importance of discipline, we need to understand one thing. The discipline of the Romans meant that any break of the formation would be frequently rallied and regrouped to continue the fight. So we could say that there were three main areas of actual military training that allowed the Romans to be very effective on the battlefield. They were well organized, well disciplined and well trained. Apparently, as far as we understand, discipline was very consistent across all legions, so there was not a significant variance in quality from one unit to the next. Of course, the first cohorts of some legions were double strength, increasing the number of soldiers. But in terms of discipline, training and organization, we could say that the Roman legions were even throughout the empire. Okay, so we understand that Roman legionaries were highly disciplined. Also, we need to keep in mind that the rules they were expected to follow were rigorous and most importantly, punishment for infractions was very harsh. Now, there were quite a lot of possible ways a Roman soldier could be punished for infractions, but of course, I think the most famous one would be decimation, meaning that one out of every ten soldiers would be killed because of the infractions made by the, the unit or perhaps the actual contubernium. But an important thing to say is that we shouldn't imagine decimation to be something uh, that common. It happened, but it didn't happen for the entirety of Roman history. There were chunks of Roman history where uh, decimation was abolished. But regardless of whether it was to death or not, punishments or for infringements were very strict and harsh. And that was a key component to create the high discipline of the legionaries. As a matter of fact, we should imagine r that Roman legionaries had to fear their commanding officers more than their enemies. But how can that be possible? Well, think about it. If you've got an enemy of Rome, okay, your actual opponent in battle, and you've got your legatus, your general, if they both want you dead, well, at least with your enemy you stand a chance of trying to defend yourself. With the legatus, you can't. If he wants you dead, you're dead. Now another very important factor, apart from training and discipline, is the equipment. And I would like to divide this into the body armor they would have, the weapons that they would use, and also logistics, transportation, building materials, engineers, architects. All of this falls within the list of advantages that the Roman legions would have against their less organized enemies. And you can tell that I have now a book in my hand, it's called Roman Body Armor by Hilary and John Travis. It's an excellent read, they are both academics but they are also reenactors. So I think they have a dual understanding, a sort of broader understanding of how Roman armor actually works. You can find it on Amazon, it's actually quite cheap and I'll see if I can leave a link for you if you want to acquire this book and I will be using this book as a basis for a lot of videos and content in the future. Now one thing that we can notice as we study the development and progression and evolution of Roman armor, one thing we see immediately is that the Romans constantly tried to find ways to improve their weapons and their armors, not only by uh, making them actually better, changing the sort of materials that we're using, coming up with new designs, sometimes also by taking inspiration from their uh, beaten enemies, for example, but also evolving their equipment depending on the demands of the sort of enemies that they were fighting against. That is why, for example, we see the development of the Roman Manica, which we see already in gladiatorial games, and it was used, for example, by the Roman legion when fighting the, during the Dacian Wars because of the sort of weapons that their opponents were using because in that case the Roman soldiers needed that extra protection to the striking arm. The Roman used a huge variety of sets of armor, of kinds of armor from lorica, squamata to hamata to segmentata but definitely the most common and iconic type of Roman armor is male.
But regardless of the kind of armor a given soldier would choose or would be able to afford, what really set aside the Roman legion was the fact that every single soldier would have a full kit. And that is probably the marvel of the Roman legions, which is rooted in the economic success of both the Republic and the Empire. A strong and effective army is a well-equipped and well-fed army. And in order to achieve these two points, you need to have a very successful economic and financial machine behind it. Also, another important aspect is the military geniuses that the Roman army had, some of which, for example, the most important one, well, the most famous one would be, of course, Julius Caesar and Scipio Africanus and so on. And that shouldn't surprise us, because you have to imagine such a militaristic, militaristic government in a, such a massive country, so having such a big pool from which you can draw, eventually you will get the geniuses, and of course they did. And if you're interested in understanding the sort of battles and war that you had between these two geniuses, Hannibal on one side and Scipio on the other, then I would refer you to a video, I actually saw a few videos that I've made on this topic and I will leave links in the description below. All that has been said so far leads us to this one single point, the economic structure. Well, you see, the economic structure of both the Republic and the Empire was, in a way, mortar that secured the success of the Roman armies. This created what I'd like to call a perfect economic loop. Now think about it this way. The Roman Republic was very successful from an economic point of view. This allowed it to create, as I said before, well-fed, well-equipped and also well-paid soldiers. Now these kind of soldiers that were trained constantly managed to win battles and gain new territories from which we have the spoils of war, the so-called loot more money and riches, which were then invested to create more well-fed, well-equipped and well-trained and paid soldiers, which again would gain more territories, which would bring back more spoils of war, which would ignite this ever-extending and recreating, reproducing loop, economic loop, which I believe was the secret to Roman success. So, as we said, all of these factors that we have mentioned definitely play an important role. But the fact that the Romans found this key to create a self-replicating governmental solid organism with a strong economic basis brought them success. It was an ever-growing self-replicating governmental organism which started to ingurgitate more and more land to satisfy its hunger for growth. Okay, number one. Well, I hope that you enjoyed this video. It was a Patreon documentary created thanks to my Patreon donation. I'd like to say big thanks to my Patreons as always because it was thanks to you guys that this month, these couple of months, I could really uh, continue creating content because unfortunately this month on YouTube for me was the worst month in the last three years in terms of YouTube revenue and that makes it very difficult for me as a content creator to make time to create videos but luckily, thanks to my uh, Patreon supporters, their donation balanced up things so again thank you so much and thanks everyone who supports my work on YouTube 
I'd like also to let my patrons know that I am working on another Patreon documentary. It's just that now, when I make Patreon documentaries, I don't always make them monthly because I've decided to give priority to quality over quantity. So I am using some of the Patreon budget to keep on making very high quality videos, but I've decided even if that takes a little longer, then if that's good for the quality of the end product, then that's a good thing. I hope that you uh, agree. So, I hope to see you tomorrow on Twitch and go check it out and if you like Bloodborne and want to see me die loads of times, you can find a video there, now. And remember, the Metatron has spread his wings. Goodbye!